welcome to the Jet Setter Show, where we explore lifestyle-friendly destinations worldwide. Enjoy and learn from a variety of experts on topics ranging from upscale travel at wholesale prices to retiring overseas, to global real estate and business opportunities, to tax havens and expatriate opportunities. You'll get great ideas on unique cultures, causes, and cruise vacations. Whether you're wealthy or just want to live a wealthy lifestyle, the Jet Setter Show is for you. Here's your host, Jason Hartman. Welcome to the Jet Setter Show. This is Jason Hartman, your host, where we explore lifestyle-friendly destinations worldwide. I think you'll enjoy the interview we have for you today, and we will be back with that in less than 60 seconds here on the Jet Setter Show. What's great about the shows you'll find on jasonhartman.com is that if you want to learn about some cool new investor software, there's a show for that. If you want to learn why Rome fell, Hitler rose, and Enron failed, there's a show for that. If you want to know about property evaluation technology on the iPhone, there's a show for that. And if you'd like to know how to make millions with mobile homes, there's even a show for that. Yep, there's a show for just about anything, only from jasonhartman.com, or type in Jason Hartman in the iTunes store. It's my pleasure to welcome James Filsinger to the show. He is with Yapta, which is a site you may have heard of. It's a very innovative business model. James has more than 16 years experience in the travel industry, and he's got uh, proven success as a CEO and in the M&A field, business development roles with global startups and Fortune 500 companies. So we're going to get kind of a unique perspective there. And James, welcome. How are you? I'm doing well, Jason. Hey, thanks for having me today. My pleasure is all mine. Are you coming to us today from Seattle by any chance? Chance? Yes, Yapta is based in Seattle. Yep, and uh, it's a beautiful, sunny, beautiful, sunny day here in Seattle. One of our uh, fourteen or fifteen days we get up here. Yeah, and when when you have those, they are incredible. So, let's make this interview snappy and get you back outside because oh, uh, you got to right. enjoy that those while they last. Well, hey, so tell us about Yapta. How did it come about? Sure, uh, Yapta began in May two thousand and seven. So we've been around for a while. And really, the, the main impetus is we are a, we're a great tool for travelers to have in their toolbox. So you may use various sites to book your travel, to research your travel. Um, but Yapto was really founded to, to, to leverage the price fluctuations in the airline industry so that if you've booked your trip or your flight someplace and you want to make sure that you've got the best price, we can track that for you. And if that price drops after you've booked it, we'll give you an alert and, and – um, allow you the opportunity to rebook that and recognize those savings with the airline. So it was really based on the fact that there is fluctuations, there are fluctuations in airline pricing, and um, we should be, we as travelers um, should be able to take advantage of that and capture those savings. Well, okay, so that sounds great because everybody, every traveler is incredibly annoyed, not only by TSA and the other perils of travel, but they're annoyed by the airline pricing models and these algorithms the airlines are using to compete with each other and price flights based on very complicated sets of things. You know, yep. it's it's amazing. Like, everybody tries to figure out how to beat it. I know I have. And, you know, I've got to mention something else, James, with that, is humans, we kind of have this funny nature, don't we? And this is just a general statement, but do I want to go out and make an extra $10,000 in my business or save 200 bucks on an airfare? <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> you know? That's right. That's right. We're it's, always looking for the best deal. That's right. And, and you're absolutely thing. right. Airlines have spent hundreds of millions of dollars and have very talented and intelligent operations research personnel who you know who have developed their revenue management and yield management systems and they look at the trends and how bookings are going on how many people are actually on the plane on what the or, origin destination is what how many segments there are you know they factor in all whether it's raining on a tuesday in seattle or not i mean there's so many factors that go into that and and it's difficult for us as travelers to figure out how to get the best price. And to your point, it is frustrating to know that I'm taking my family on vacation to Orlando and you know the person right next to me paid $250 less for their seat than I did. And so what Yapta does is, and we've actually identified more than 300 million 
about 350 million actually in airfare savings for um, our registered users on yapta.com and we have uh, over a million users right now and and so the way we go about doing that is we do price checks on a on a consistent basis and then go ahead and alert the traveler via email, via text, or via uh, a Twitter feed. When you talk about price comparison, and it's interesting because you, you do it before, during, and after the booking, I guess, and I want to hear more about that, but is it the exact same flight? So if I book the 10.30 a.m. flight from Phoenix to Seattle or Phoenix to New York or whatever, you know, is it the exact same flight where the fluctuation occurs or is it any flight during that time range on any airline in the same route or there there's so much complexity to this it's mind boggling sometimes sure and and uh, we actually track the actual flight so we track the same origin and destination the same flight and the same class of service so that you know you're not disrupted and you're right there is complexity around that and while you may uh you know if i'm flying from seattle to london um, and I've booked a certain price, I've, I got that flight for a certain price, maybe I could get routed through Chicago, Atlanta, and New York and save money, but do I, do I really want that as my first price check? So we've actually had interest in that with providing the service for a check against other airlines um, within a certain time window and also with neighboring airports, so like instead of O'Hare you know, going to Midway or something. So, but today we actually have, we price exactly the same cabin class, the exact same flight, the exact same departure time as you booked. So talk to us, if you would, about when the prices might fluctuate and how someone would actually interface with Yapta. Would they go and would they say, hey, you know, I'm kind of thinking about flying to London three weeks from now on Tuesday and kind of keep an eye on this for me? Is it like a fair watching system at first and then or how does it work? You can do both. So you can go out to yapta.com and you can search for um, a particular flight and you can put in, you can ask for that uh, flight to be tracked. Or you can also go in and most of our users will go in and they will uh, post booking. So they've already bought the trip. They'll go in and put in their information and then we'll alert them if that price drops. So you can do, you can do, uh, do both. Okay, good. So further information on how to use the site. I mean, you have over a million users. That's, that's fairly big. Yeah, yeah, we've been very happy with the success that we've had with Yapta. And you just all you have to do is go out to uh to yapta.com, you give us a name and your email address and you're you're registered. So there's no fee to use our our site and if you have the opportunity uh to rebook, we we point you directly to the airlines to rebook that that trip. So um and then when you get a refund, depending upon the airline, uh, in many cases, you will get uh, the refund in the form of a voucher to be used again. So on the one hand, you may have somebody saying, well, what you're doing, Yapta, is you're messing with the airline's yield management systems, and so aren't they going to get upset? But in actuality, what we're doing is we are pointing for rebooking back to the airline site, and we are also um, enabling vouchers, which will then be used at a later date by that traveler. So I may be booking a trip and tracking a flight that I myself personally am going on for business, and I save, I save some money on that, and I get a voucher for $300 from the airline. Well, the next trip I go on may be actually, uh, I may take my spouse or my children with me or something, and I'll, I'll use that voucher. So it actually promotes loyalty, not only direct booking to the airline, but then also future loyalty uh, by using those vouchers again. Right, and that's a good point. You know, it also might be just a case of maybe the next trip you take is a $500 trip and you only have a $300 voucher, so they're still gaining exactly. revenue. So I can see how the airlines wouldn't, you know, at first they might have thought, oh, this is terrible, this is going to kill us. But ultimately, it may be beneficial to them, right? That's right. Yep, it drive, it'll it'll drive some loyalty and and um, you know and their direct booking channel is is where they're pointing travelers today um, and is their most uh, cost effective from their perspective. So. Now, does the does the say you book a flight and the the price of that flight goes down, so it, the the refund of the difference you get exactly the difference if it's if it's nineteen dollars and thirty six cents is that what you get a voucher for? Well, you actually uh, the the refund difference will depend upon the airline. Uh, and it will depend upon the airline's change fees. So if there is a change fee imposed, we will alert you only if 
the savings exceed the change fee. So if there's a $100 change fee and the savings on the ticket is $125, then you would get a $25 voucher from the airline. Okay, so when you're talking about change fee, let's just, if we could, let's just really make sure the listeners understand the way it works. You go, you book your flight, the price is $500 for that flight. And then the price drops to $375, and there's a $100 change fee. So what, what people are doing is they're actually, they, they need to change the flight? Or explain that a little bit. No, you. they just they just rebook their, their same, so they're on the same flight again. So what would happen is, we, we actually see, I think average airfare um, is, is closer, it's between six and seven hundred dollars, uh, let's just say. And then, so let's, let's go back to your example. Um, so five hundred dollars, you book that five hundred dollars, it drops to three seventy five. What's going to happen is you're going to rebook with that airline. They will impose a, a change fee and they will give you a credit for the remaining twenty five dollars. Um, and that credit can be used on future travel. Generally, that's good for uh, a 12-month period of time. So you have up to a year to, to use that uh, that $25. And and when they and hopefully it's a lot more than 25. By the way, do you have an amount? You probably keep stats on this. What is the average voucher value? Well, we have seen we have seen potential savings on average, uh, and it depends on the mix of international and domestic, uh, and it also depends obviously on carrier and the routes but generally we did a uh, we did a study um, and uh, we've averaged about five hundred dollars plus in savings on a ticket so there obviously that's factoring into the mix you've got some international travel in there but the savings are significant well that can be very significant so when they use the voucher they're not doing that through yapta right they go to the airline's actual site at that time so they don't get the yapta benefits the second time around i assume well, we can we can then continue to track that flight for them. So flights we have seen, and, and flights will have many price fluctuations in them. So there may be a savings opportunity uh, at one point in time, and there may be a follow-up savings opportunity at another point in time. So the traveler could continue to have that tracked through our through our system. Yeah, very interesting. Does yet does yet to cater to a certain type of traveler? Is it an international traveler? Is it a business class business traveler or a business class or first class traveler? Or, you know, is it good for domestic hops? What's sort of the thing that yeah, is no, their specialty? No, we, we actually are uh, available and a good option for any traveler uh, of any profile, whether a business traveler, international or domestic. You know, you, you hinted at the complexity of, of airlines yield management systems, and they are just so complex that there's opportunity for really any traveler profile uh, to take advantage of the uh, of Yapta's uh, tracking capabilities and to be able to save money on their ticket. I actually had uh, a colleague of mine, uh, I recently, as you mentioned in the intro, I recently became CEO um, and president of Yapta in mid-July. And when I was reaching out to a colleague of mine, and I let him know where I was working at Yapta, he said, oh, Yapta, yes, I use that service. I saved $1,700 on my family's vacation <laughs> to Venezuela. Isn't and that I said, great? wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really, so he's a, he's a business colleague of mine that was taking his family on a holiday. So it's really good for any, any kind of traveler. And, and, and it's interesting, when you talk to him, and he talked about the $1,700 savings, boy, by the way, Venezuela, wow, that's an exotic. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I, I'd love to go. I have this morbid fascination with communism, but uh, I'd kind of be afraid. I want to go to North Korea, too, you know, I haven't oh, been there. Boy. Uh, but, but anyway, I'm kind of afraid, too, for sure. But when, when he quotes that $1,700 in savings, I mean, that's not an, a fluffy amorphous number is it because he had book he had actually booked a flight and and then got that money back right yes and then tracked yeah he tracked that flight and he got that uh he got that refund that's correct and and so i assume he wasn't careless when he booked the flight he looked around and got the best deal maybe went to a couple different websites that's another interesting feature of, of yepta and um if you're tracking a flight and you you do not get an alert uh that the price has dropped we actually send out weekly uh, summaries of all of the, the trips that you're tracking. And in some cases, uh, as an example, I happen to be traveling to Orlando here in the next week. I was tracking my flight with Yapta, and I got my weekly summary, and it said that the price had actually gone up. So that tells me that it, makes, it helps me to feel good about 
hey, I, I actually booked a pretty good price because the price is going up now. So we give you both both kind of sets of information and feedback on, on how you did on booking your trip. Very interesting. Now, the airline doesn't come back and make you give them a voucher when the price goes up, right? <laughs> uh, don't give them that idea. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, I'm sure the price almost always goes up. I mean, as you get closer to the, de- the departure date, that's... Almost goes without saying. Now, an interesting thing, I, you know, you might have a comment on this, and it's not really about Yapta per se, but it reminded me because my next question is, how does the search capability work? But before we get to that, I'm sure you heard recently about that little scandal with, I think it was Orbitz, charging people with Apple computers more than people with PCs. <laughs> <laughs> Any commentary yeah. on that one? I thought that was pretty amazing. Yeah, that's uh, that's an interesting way to try to extract ancillary revenue and incremental fees from people for uh, for their approach to to booking. It's interesting and just kind of a commentary. I've been in the travel technology industry for, as you mentioned in the intro, about 16 years, and just seeing how you know airlines in the travel industry behaves. It's just it's interesting that you know they, the pricing has come down significantly. It used to be that air, air travel was a large component of your, your trip expense. And you would ask an agent, you know, hey, can I, can I book a flight from Seattle to Chicago? And you'd hear type, 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 and they'd say, I can get you there for $1,800. And you'd say, oh, is there anything cheaper? And they'd type, 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 and say, I'll get you there for 1600 And you felt good about that. You thought, oh, I got a good deal, and, and uh, I'll move forward with that. And, and with the uh, with the advent of the internet and airlines embracing the internet, and I, I'm fully aware that this this train has left the station, but now you have customers who are shopping on price, and so airlines have had have cut their core pricing to be able to get the eyeballs and get at the top of the search list and and get travelers to book with them, and and so now what they're doing is having having to add on all these other services to try to make up the revenue, to, so they can cover their labor and their fuel expenses, and it's just it's interesting that the changing dynamics of the travel industry have gone from airline travel, you know, in its heyday was luxurious and expensive and for a few. And today it's more of a, it's the Greyhound bus in the sky. It, it, it is. Yeah, yeah, it is. Right. Yeah. No question about it. I mean, I remember just to your point, James, when I was a kid before Reagan deregulated the industry, it was $500 to fly from LA to New York. I grew up in LA grandparents live back east and you can fly to New York for less than $500 today many times and and you know if you adjust for inflation i bet the price has come down by a magnitude really i mean you know yep, it's that's a great it's, point. it's pretty significant i mean adjusting for inflation and and everything i'm guessing if you take real inflation that airfare would probably be 2 3000 dollars today sure yep so Yep. Yeah, it's an, yep. it's an amazing difference, and maybe people don't appreciate that as much. We all grouse and complain about all the hassles of flying and how we're in a sardine can, but we can do a lot more of it than we could ever afford in the past, that's for sure. You're uh, absolutely so, correct. So, yep. yeah, that's true. Yep. Well, you know, what? how does the actual search engine work? Because a lot of this comes down to the search capabilities of the website you're using. And I don't know the differences, but I, I do know, of course, airlines like Southwest, they don't, I don't think they appear on any website except their own. So you wouldn't get their fares on Yapta, I assume, either, probably, right? Well, we, we actually use, um, you're correct, with uh, regarding Southwest. We do use a, a partner for our price checking. And so for, uh, for search, um, we actually use a partner kayak. So if you if you're just looking for looking to book a flight um, and want to do a search, kayaks are a partner for that. But then actual price checking, we use Travelport for that uh, for our airfare. And so uh, because Southwest does not participate in the GDSs, we unfortunately don't have access to their. Fare. And what's a GDS? Just give us that lingo. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, global distribution system. Okay. Uh, good. And that yeah. is a. There are three main global distribution system companies in the world: Sabre. Amadeus and Travelport, mm-hmm. uh, and what they do is they airlines will put their inventory, so all of their flight uh, information and their available seats, uh, into these systems to then be sold by the old the old style brick and mortar. Sorry to call them old style, but the brick and mortar travel agencies that actually have a you know physical location, as well as the online travel agencies like Expedia, Travelocity, Orbitz, uh, etc. Uh, and they access those major systems to be able to get that information. Right. Okay. So you used one of the three. You used Travelport. 
right? Yes. Okay, that's yep. that's yours. Because I was going to ask you about Kayak, which I haven't honestly used that much, but people always seem to say good things about it, and I really didn't know why. Does it does it search more places, or what is the difference when you go to Orbitz, Travelocity, Kayak, uh, Yapta? What what happens there? I mean, are they? Yeah, the prices are different. I mean, I've had where even on Hotwire it'll open up different windows, and Kayak does that too, and they're they're quite different sometimes. Why? Yeah, well, it's so the airlines have what's called a participating carrier agreement to participate or put their inventory, like I said, in these global distribution systems. But they also want to drive traffic to their own websites directly. And then some of these other online travel agencies will then be able to bundle or get what's called a negotiated fare to where that they, they can combine offerings to offer different prices. Now, in theory, according to all of the agreements that the airlines have with the different players in the industry, you should be seeing consistent pricing. But that goes back to the complexity, again, of yield management systems that the airlines have put in place and the price fluctuations and when that's actually priced and uh, and those types of things. And it depends on where those online travel agencies are actually looking for the price. Some of them, not to dive too much into the technical aspects, but some of them will go to a cash. So they'll price, they'll get a price, and they'll pull all that pricing information into a database, and it will reside there for a period of time, and they will price against that cash. So it's not actually uh, real time that they're looking at. I don't know if you've ever or any of your listeners have ever gone out to an online travel agency, and they get through, they say, oh, there's a price for, here's this for $500, and by the time they get through to just about pay, then it says, oh, we're sorry, that price is no longer available. That's happened to me personally. I know. know. What and how annoying, you know. (laughs) Yeah, and that's because because you're you're actually pricing against um, a shopping cash, a shopping database cash. And then when they actually, when you go to actually pay, they have to go out and real-time price that to bring that back to make sure they're getting you the most accurate price. And so that's when you get sometimes that uh, discrepancy if it's no longer available. So it depends on a lot of factors. The travel industry has built a lot of complexity into its systems and and pricing and things like that. But back to your original comment about, or your original question about Kayak. Kayak does do a broader search, and it it does search across a number of direct sites and online travel agencies. And and so it's it's kind of made its name on this uh, on its search capabilities to go specifically into the travel agent uh, in the travel industry. So d- distinguish that if you would, because you talked about how you use Kayak. Uh, you, Yapta uses Kayak somehow, but then it doesn't use it completely. What what's the distinction there? Well, so if you've already booked a, a trip uh, and you put in your name and email address, and then you put in your itinerary information, we will track that. And the way we track that is with Travelport. Now, if you, we also have the capability at yapta.com to go ahead and search for and book a flight. So you can, uh, you can go out to Yapta and you can actually plan your trip. Um, and you can say, I want to buy a ticket from Seattle to Orlando. And you search that and you search the available options. And that actually goes through our uh, kayak partnership. Yapta gives me a lot of security that I don't have to mess around. You know, I can just start booking trips and not worry too much about them. Your your software and your system will do a lot of that worrying for me that I'm not getting robbed. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. We we will watch out for you and make sure that you're getting the best uh, the best deal that uh, that you can. Yep. And according to your website, it says the savings identified for y- Yapta members since May of 2007 over 250 million dollars. Yeah, we actually need to update that because it's over over 300 million now. Wow! Yeah. Unbelievable. And we've actually done we've actually uh, conducted over one billion with a B price checks for our users. And the average savings per Yapta member is 334 dollars now. That that isn't on one flight. It's it's for maybe that member has booked multiple flights. Actually, that's on uh, qualified tickets. So if you're if you're tracking a ticket when there is savings, that's on the savings. That's not over like a year or some time frame. That's when we identify savings for our users on average across all itineraries and all tickets that have savings. That's how much we save our travelers. That is amazing. That's a lot yes. of money. Yeah. I mean, that is like yep. a significant 
amount of money. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yep. You know what I've always had a hard time with is I just, on long flights, when I go to Europe or any international travel, I, I can sort of tolerate it domestically, but I, I just I just do not want to ever fly coach again on long flights. And I've always had a tough time getting decent deals on business class tickets. Any advice on that? Well, I think there's a, there's a few things to look for. Um, one is you should try to book your ticket midweek in the Tuesday to Thursday time frame because about 80% of airline sales start on Tuesday and end on Thursday. So that might help you get a better, a better price on that. And availability and pricing is also better if you avoid Monday, Friday, or Sunday uh, travel days uh, because generally speaking, those, those days are priced higher due to the demand that's driven by business travelers. And then another thing you can do is, depending upon when you're flying, if you have the opportunity to book your trip somewhere around the end of August and to the beginning of September, and then again around the end of December or early January, that's a good time to book your trips too because bookings tend to drop off significantly. You've got the end of summer coming up. People are, you know, have done their traveling, uh, and so the end of August and beginning of September is a good time for some lower fares being offered. And then the same with end of December, early January, you've already booked, you've had your Christmas holiday, your, your, your New Year's holiday, and it's a good time to get a deal. A couple other things to, to think about is uh, if you follow your favorite airline on Twitter or on Facebook, uh, a lot of airlines have really embraced the social media aspect of that and will provide special deals or special offers for for those followers or friends on Facebook. And then lastly, I'd say, you know, one, one piece of advice would be to make sure that you clear your cookies off your computer um, before you start the shopping process. It may seem a little bit counterintuitive, but, but they don't, you know, online shopping doesn't always uh, reward loyal customers. A lot of times they're trying to get that first customer and really give a good deal to then build that brand loyalty and, and try to bring you back. Uh, and so you might be surprised uh, that if you clear your you know, if you do a search and you don't really find the price that you're looking for, clear your cookies, go into your browser settings and clear those out, and then try a search again. And you never know, you might get a, a reduced price offered there just from doing that. You know, James, it is amazing. I have been paranoid about that for a couple of years now <laughs> because it seems like they know this guy's been here and he's still looking to do that same thing and eventually we're going to get him. So we're going to stick yep. it to him. I've been paranoid about that. I'm wondering if that's even legal, actually. <laughs> it sounds like uh, what Orbitz was doing with a Mac and PC users and stuff, but I don't deny that it exists. That's it's 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 amazing to hear that validated it really is it really is so so that is a, that is a real thing huh good good advice what what do you see as the future for yapta are you going to get into do you do cruises or anything like that uh we don't today but uh that's a that's a very good opportunity for us um and again on something that has that value on that price point price fluctuations would give uh, a good return to to travelers and cruisers so uh so yeah that's certainly an area that i'm that i'm looking into you know, candidly, uh, I'm getting my arms around the business and where we are from the, from that standpoint on the consumer side. I would um, say that we have made a transition and, and a pivot into the enterprise B2B space, so the business-to-business space. Um, we have launched a product called Fair IQ, which behaves in a similar manner to Yapta.com, but it is specifically tailored to the business environment. So we are selling this service now into travel management companies and corporations. Uh, and we've seen that we can save uh, upwards of 4% of annual travel spend for a corporation. So uh, significant savings that, that translate right down to the bottom line for those customers. Yeah, that's great. I've always felt that large companies overpay for travel expenses. You know, it seems like whenever I'm next to someone on the plane or in line with them at the counter, they, they've always got the super expensive ticket that costs $1,100 for the $300 ticket because you can change it, you can do anything with it. And I, I just can't imagine that's worth it. To, but again, that's an area I don't really understand. So so I don't know. But, you know, you also allow people to book hotels and cars on your, your website. Does the Yapta business model apply to that? Yeah, we do. We do. Um, we also do pre-purchase price tracking for hotels, and you can uh, you can put in a threshold again for alerts, whether that's ten, twenty, or fifty dollars, uh, and we will go ahead and and alert you. Uh, and in that particular case, on the hotel side, we partner with Orbitz and Booking.com. 
Uh, on the car side, we, you know, our, our traffic and our, our users, the vast, vast majority utilize our yapta.com service for uh, airfare price tracking. But we do offer a hotel product, um, and there is the ability to book cars. One of the things with the car spend is it's generally a smaller dollar value, uh, and so recognizing savings that, uh, that truly kind of um, get people excited about rebooking and calling back is, is a bit limited. Yeah, I, I, can, I can understand that. Hey, one last question for you. Where did the name come from, Yapta? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was, uh, you know, we launched in 2007, and we were looking for, uh, you know, a name that was uh, kind of had that, that an internet feel to it, and it actually stands for your amazing personal travel assistant. Ah, see, I would so, have never known that. That's, that's yep. fantastic. Yep. Well, good stuff. Well, James, thank you so much for joining us today. Really interesting to learning more about yapta.com, and I'm sure our listeners will go and take advantage of it. Anything else you'd like people to know? Have safe travels. And after you book your your trip, uh, make sure you uh, track it on yapta.com, and and we'll save you money. Fantastic. James Filsinger, thanks again for joining us. All right. Thanks, Jason. I appreciate it. Now's your opportunity to get the Financial Freedom Report. The Financial Freedom Report provides financial self-defense in uncertain times, and it's your source for innovative, forward-thinking investment property strategies and advice. Get your newsletter subscription today. You get a digital download and even more. Go to jasonhartman.com to get yours today. This show is produced by the Hartman Media Company, all rights reserved. For distribution or publication rights and media interviews, please visit www.hartmanmedia.com or email media at hartmanmedia.com. Nothing on this show should be considered specific personal or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own, and the host is acting on behalf of Platinum Properties Investor Network, Inc. exclusively.